The shocking truth behind China's ghost cities. China's record number of vacant houses and urban projects, sitting at over 50 million units and growing, is an increasingly worrying domestic challenge. Known as ghost cities, these developments have created a housing bubble representative of decades of Chinese progress, but also turmoil. The phrase ghost city might imply a city that was once full of life and now abandoned, but China's ghost cities are brand new, and their high-rises never populate. Many had remained that way for years, byproducts of rapid economic growth that continues to plague the nation's urban planning strategy. In this video, we will take you on a virtual tour of China's ghost cities, how they came to be, and what will become of them. But before we begin, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, kindly do so by clicking the subscribe icon below. Give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. Now, let's get it on. Ghost cities come in many shapes and sizes. While information about them is scarce, studies have identified some 50 municipalities of varying sizes, often labeled as development areas, new areas, or eco-cities. They are usually located on the outskirts of second and third tier Chinese cities. Most are fully completed, but some were suspended mid-construction. Miniature replicas of London, Paris, and European villages have low residency rates, making them perfect venues for wedding photo shoots or film sets. There are about 687 cities in China, and the real estate sector accounts for a whopping 29% of the country's total GDP. However, the Chinese real estate market has also been grabbing a lot of media attention lately, due to the $300 billion Evergrande debt crisis. But this is not the only big problem that the housing market in China is facing. A recent report reveals that about 20% of the total urban housing properties in China, around 65 million properties, are vacant. This 20% includes large sections of cities like Tian Ducheng, Thames Town, Binhai, and many others, which span across hundreds of square kilometers, but have far more empty buildings than occupied ones. Such ghost cities in China have well-connected roads, infrastructure, skyscrapers, and a variety of public spaces, but are vastly underpopulated and have vast areas that are entirely without residents. Real estate was once a sector where investment was considered safe and profitable in China. Even the Chinese government encouraged investment in property because, for decades, the real estate market and its more or less continuously rising prices has been a key driver in increasing the country's wealth as well as household income. The communist government accumulates sales revenues worth billions of dollars from land sales and the earnings of the property market. And the reason behind this real estate driven economy lies in the country's constitution. According to the Chinese constitution, all the land in China is owned by the state. So when developers want to build on a piece of land, they have to lease it from the government, often by participating in local land auctions. For many years, the bubble in the Chinese housing market led to rising property prices, and developers scrambled to build even more units. But demand for units has now shrunk due to a number of factors, including increasing unaffordability of homes, an aging population, and slowing population growth. In fact, each year, a total of around 3 million homes are built in Europe and the US, but China has been constructing more than 10 million residential units annually. Most of the people in China already own property, so they don't need a new place to live, but many of them continue to buy the newly developed real estate as investments. Among the most famous ghost cities in China is Tiandancheng also called the Paris of China. Popular among couples for wedding shoots, the city of Tianducheng, located about two hours west of Shanghai, was constructed to resemble a miniature Paris. Built to support a population of 10,000, the town includes a 300-foot-tall Eiffel Tower, gray Parisian facades, cobblestone streets, and Renaissance fountains. Built in 2007, by 2013, the city had only 2,000 residents, and at that time, it was being referred to as a ghost town. However, recent reports reveal that at present, more than 30,000 people are living in Tianducheng, and the city population is witnessing an upward trend. Then there is Ordos. Located in the Inner Mongolian region, Kangbashi district of the prefecture-level city of Ordos was built to house 300,000 residents. But for many years, only around 2,000 people lived here, and much of the area gave off the vibes of a large and vacant post-apocalyptic world. This ghost city has also been featured in the famous photo series, Ordos, A Failed Utopia, and Unborn Cities. According to some reports, in the past few years, the Chinese government has moved some of the country's top education institutes, including both schools and universities, to Kangbashi. And because regulations require parents who want to send children to particular schools to own a home within the district, the area has since been flooded with new residents, 
as many students and their families are now moving to Ordos for quality education. Another famous ghost city is Tonghui Town, also called the abandoned Switzerland of China. Built to attract tourists, the architectural design of Tonghui Town seems to be taken from the streets and houses in Switzerland and Italy. The town is not a town, but a European-style bar street located in the Chaoyang district of Beijing. It incorporates various European-style restaurants, watchtowers, bars, and other structures. Unfortunately, due to poor public reception, the town never took off joining an estimated 1,600 other unprofitable theme parks in China. Most of the buildings were subsequently abandoned. Next up is Thames Town, which is fondly called Shanghai's London. One of the few places in Asia where you can find London's signature red telephone booths, English-style buildings, and statues of Harry Potter and James Bond is Thames Town. Built in the Sanjiang district of China in 2006, just 24.8 miles from Shanghai, this London look-alike locality has cobblestone streets, a village green, Edwardian townhomes surrounded by neat privet hedges, and white stucco Victorian terraces. There's also a mock Tudor pub, a fish and chip shop, and numerous other commercial and residential properties, most of which are now vacant. Two billion won, $330 million, was spent over three years to create this piece of merry old England in China. Initially, properties in Thamestown were selling fast, but most were purchased as investment properties and were never occupied. Soon, restaurants were closed and the whole place became a vacant property investment hub. Then, there is an empty Manhattan in the Binhai region, a ghost city called Yuzhapu. Financial districts like Yuzhapu and Zhangluan were built in Binhai to serve as new economic hubs in the North China region. Both regions have large and fully developed government headquarters, shopping malls, high-rise skyscrapers, and every other kind of infrastructure that is required to support a fast-paced economy. Unfortunately, despite this much development, more than 10 years have passed since the construction was completed, but the occupancy rates in Yuzhapu and Zhangluan are still still low enough to label them as ghost towns. The term ghost city was first used by photographers and journalists documenting the Kangbashi district. Located in Ordos, Mongolia, Kangbashi is one of the largest and most well-known ghost cities. Originally designed to accommodate over 1 million residents, the urban mega project only housed around 20,000 people when it gained international attention around 2009, when journalists flocked to the area to document its impressive but empty landmarks and buildings. In years since, the world has directed more attention to these intriguing urban mega projects, but data from local Chinese governments remain scarce. What is known is that apartments erected in ghost cities are rapidly purchased by homeowners who have no intention of moving in, and prices steadily increase. The result is a massive and worrying property bubble. But there are several key unanswered questions. In the face of China's never-ending urbanization spree, why are there still so many underpopulated cities? Will China's new initiatives focusing on pandemic recovery and environmental sustainability finally challenge the standards of urban planning and shine a light of hope on the future of these cities? What does the future of urban planning look like for China? So many questions with no immediate answers. According to experts on Chinese urban development, Understanding ghost cities requires knowledge of two main factors, the reason houses were built and the reason people buy them. Most new urban projects are commissioned by local governments. Officials typically spend anywhere from two to five years in a regional position before being transferred to Beijing. To improve their track record, local officials often fight to demonstrate concrete economic growth and local development during their term. Private developers were also eager to jump on board because demand for new houses was insatiable. Ghost city property buyers are primarily middle and upper class citizens who want a secondary or tertiary property for investment purposes. Chinese property investment is very different from American investment. Chinese households at all income levels save more on average, but with strict investment regulations in place, many turn to buying real estate. Chinese families are also more likely to purchase additional properties for future generations of children and grandchildren. Additionally, there is little incentive for owners to rent out these spaces and risk taking in bad tenants because most places in China do not have property tax. In fact, many of the units remain unfurnished for the whole duration of the ownership. Many of the cities may have nice stadiums, museums, and government buildings, but they lack economic activity and other attractive functions. This is why those cities have very few permanent occupancies often composed of government officials and retired elders. In 2020, the total value of China's housing market was over $52 trillion, 
dwarfing the U.S. bond market. While properties in top-tier cities are so popular they require lotteries, the value of housing in the underpopulated cities often remains underwhelming. If a ghost city never receives the anticipated attention, homeowners are at risk of losing large chunks of their investment. The local governments also face the long-lasting consequences of draining resources to maintain empty cities. So, there you have it. Which one of these ghost cities would you like to visit? Let us know in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe, like, and share without forgetting to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.